I'm excited to be here. Uh, one of the things, I'm glad we're here in the same city. Um, we've had an interesting path to get here, to be here with drive planning. We have some similarities, yeah. but I want to just get with you and tell me about your experience in terms of your background and how you got here with drive and right. what it feels like, what it feels like for you on this side yeah. of the equation. Yeah, so my, my name's Ryan Lawler. Um, one of the first person, uh, people I talked to when I joined Drive was Everett. And, uh, you know, David Bradford tells me that uh, he's an ex-baseball player, major leaguer. So uh, I get on the phone with him and it was, you know, it's like we knew each other our whole life. So it's a good conversation. Um, definitely a different uh, side of life that I'm enjoying now. You know how it is, you know, a lot of travel and, um, you know, not really a consistent schedule. Um, but I'm really appreciative of Drive and you know the opportunities that we're getting. So it's been it's been nice to help other people and put people first. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I know you played a lot longer than I did, and you went into scouting. You want to give a little background about that? Sure, sure. Man, my my playing days. You bring back old memories. I spent a lot of time on the road. I played uh, about 16 years in uniform. Um, I played in the major leagues. I uh, got about four, four and a half years in the big leagues. I got time in the minor leagues, uh, did some independent ball, and then I did another, another decade of scouting. So I was all in, I was 25, 26 years plus in professional baseball. Like you said, all the traveling. We traveled, we had fun, and all of those travels, they, they led me to this point, but it was a circuitous route because uh, after scouting, uh, my father, you know, he's a cancer survivor. So he's a cranky old man. He's still alive and he's gotten a lot better because he gives me the blues. Uh, but I took some time off to help my father. <clears throat> then from there, uh, I'd come back home to Atlanta and I had the good fortune to meet David Bradford. I met him on two separate, two separate occasions, and we chatted, and he wanted to explore more, and so did I. And he said, hey, you know what? Why don't we call in my CEO? We can talk to you a little bit. And I said, okay, fine. What's your CEO's name? He told me, Todd Burkhalter. Just to show how small of a world this is, Todd Burkhalter and myself played high school baseball together. And that was over 30 years ago. Now, we're, now we are reunited at his company. That's great. <laughs> so it came full circle. So yeah. it felt like uh, that match made in heaven and that, you know how they say everything comes full circle. I'm back home, reunited with an ex-teammate and shoot, we've even gotten our old coach involved. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, it's crazy you say that, you know, whether it's a high school teammate or a college teammate, you know, you still have that bond. Um, you know, I didn't mention, but I played nine years myself with the Braves and the Cubs organizations. Um, so nine years to me feels like, a, like pretty much my, you know, last bit of my 20s. And before that was since I was a kid. So yeah. you get it, you know, yeah. it's all that you know. But um, like you said, teammates from before always kind of stick around and you got that bond. Um, so that's, I think, when we met, it was already kind of established that we had that same mindset, that same kind of language that we understood. So we kind of built off each other mm -hmm. when we started Definitely. into the financial planning route. Um, it's been super cool to, to learn from you. And then, you know, like you said, full circle with Todd. We're all yeah. learning from him. He's doing a great job. So it's been, it's been awesome. Man, and I'll tell you, one of, the, uh, one of the most interesting parts is we're both pitchers. Yep. We were both pitchers, and uh, uh, David, he, he, he makes reference uh, quite often. He's like, well, hey, if you're an ex-baseball player, but only if you're a pitcher, yeah. you can come be on my team. <laughs> so we got pitchers, uh, ex-baseball players, but I think it, it, it helps us out with, um, with our mindset and uh, things of that nature in terms of uh, not only discipline, but having the, the, the initiative to to have that self-driven uh, right. uh, type atmosphere. Uh, tell me a little bit about what it is now on this side that you 
that yeah. you think about that you may have wish you'd known, you know, in, in your prior life, so to speak. Right. So one of the first things you said was, you know, how we're self self driven, I guess. Um, I think a thing that all pitchers do is they're always trying to improve and learn mm -hmm. a new pitch, learn <laughs> a new thing, you know, adjust their mechanics. So in financial planning, there's a lot of that, right? Because we're always kind of learning new um, things that we can implement, yeah. things that are going on in the, you know, the economy. Um, been very fortunate to have some of those opportunities with Drive to share. Um, but from this side, looking back, um, you know, I came from a mentality of you know, get, you, get your bonus, whatever, and save it, um, live off that, you know, try to take care of your family. And, um, you know, if I would have known some of the things I know now, things would be a little different, but I'm very thankful that I'm able to learn now and help other people see that, um, you know, side of things that I'm seeing now. Yeah. Especially friends, family, clients, anybody really. You know, you make connections anywhere you go. So it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. Uh, and you hit the nail right on the head. If I knew then what I knew now, it would have been a whole different ballgame, at least in my head. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, yeah. it, it really would have been. Uh, because um, thinking back on it, like I didn't have anything in my career where there were any risky moves or things like that. It was all just real life. Yeah. Uh, once the contract stopped, those type of checks stopped, and you live, thrive, you find other means to earn a living. But having a way to structure it where if I had really known how, how important it is to make your money work as hard as you yeah. do or I do, it would have put me in a in a position where even faster than now, the, where I am now, even quicker than now, I would have had the opportunity to be in a position to help the the family members I'll never meet. You know, right. the progeny, my my uh, my children's children's right. children, and 100%. so forth and so on. Uh, but. You know, one of the great things here at Drive, we meet everyone where they're at. And with that, um, talk to us a little bit about some of the, said like some of the, uh, some of the things where traditionally, where are most people taught to right. house their money or make their money work? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, when you think about it traditionally and how I used to do it even, um, you know, how my, I was growing up kind of uh, understanding things was, you know, you plan for your retirement at a young age, you put things into a uh, stock market, you put things into a mutual fund, and you, you know, you take your small wins here and there, you take your losses, and um, you kind of just never really know what's going on, but you're looking for the future to be able to retire and a good, you know, good fortune and whatnot. And um, I think that's one of the areas that when I first joined was very, uh, entertaining or attractive was being able to see that you can put funds for the now and enjoy your life and, and have a lifestyle that you want to live. You know, I was playing ball, I was traveling, um, loved every minute of it. I'm sure you did too. It teaches oh, you life without lessons. A doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. Um, but you know, you, when you get done and, and you know, those things come around where you want to be able to live a lifestyle that you can enjoy and not have to slave away and, you know, put your income into funds that you might not be able to see and then, you know, pay the, pay the tax man at the end of the year also with, with your hard-earned income. There's many ways that we have learned that can change people's lives in the meantime and have an impact on their life moving forward. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you because uh, like here, our motto, the drive plan and motto is keep more, make more, live more. more. Exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Um, being able to have, say, tax strategies to help you keep more. Um, find out where you may be losing money unknowingly or unwittingly, yep. uh, or reallocating funds, you know, things like that. Uh, being able to make more investment opportunities or uh, opportunities that are backed by real estate yep. that don't have the volatility or the speculation of say the stock market. Mm -hmm. It's not the stocks are bad. We're just trying to, you know, especially for myself and a lot of people that I know, they want something that is not not as volatile mm -hmm. or not as speculative. They can overnight 
<laughs> right. overturn the boat, you know. But one of the things that I really found interesting with what you just said is being able to enjoy it now. Right. Because I know my parents, uh, uh, family members, or older members in the community, when I was a kid, all you heard was, I'm going to save, I'm going to save, or I'm going to use this type of structure so that when I retire, then I will enjoy myself. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is I don't want to be where I'm decrepit, uh, can't walk, can't yeah. enjoy it. I want to be able to enjoy the spoils right. now and still be able to leave something behind as a legacy. So keep more, make more, live more. Sounds great right. to me. And with that being said, you know, we still encourage people to um, be smart with their, with their financials. We're trying to encourage people to keep a, you know, a certain percentage of their income saved every year. But by doing that, we can um, find sources why they, where they might be losing money that they're not sure about or they mm -hmm. didn't know about. Exactly. And when you take the power of, of keeping more, you ultimately, like you said, make more. If you want to kind of speak on some of those things that we have going on right now, I think this would be a good point um, to make is, is some of our private opportunities that we've got going on. Yeah, of course. Uh, so like one of our, one of our, well, we have two that are super popular right now. Uh, one is called the CORE Fund. It's C-O-R-E Fund. It's an acronym. It stands for Cash Out Real Estate Fund. It is based on the power of tax liens. Uh, so one of the things that's really super about it is um, we do the heavy lifting. We partner with people who do the heavy lifting, uh, do the tax liens, and they are able to, when they make the profit, is basically a profit sharing um, that a lot of times people are... Right. Do you have the time to go out there and sit on the courthouse yeah, steps? I'll say one thing is this is an expert team, right? We're, we're not experts on this. We can go and read about it, but they've been doing this for several years, over a decade. So. Right, right. And, and they're very skilled at this, and what they, you know, what they benefit from is being able to do more at a time with us as a, a lender at Drive Planning. So they, they're able to go do more projects. Like you said, they're getting a guaranteed rate of return almost, I think almost 100% of the time because of that. They're getting these distressed properties, you know, way below market value. Well, shoot, it's better than the percentages in baseball. Uh, Tell you that much true. right there. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, and then one of our other products is called the Real Opportunity, and that stands for Real Estate Acceleration Loan. Yep. Um, and that affords some some really great returns, and with the power of compounding interest. Yeah. Uh, it can help set you up. It's, it's a tool, so along with some of the other tools, you can make a, a, a really strong, comprehensive financial plan, but tell me a little bit about real. Right, so one of the things off, right off the bat that, that's a little bit different is um, the real opportunity is a 90-day term, right? Mm. And after a 90-day term, you're, you're able to pretty much elect to do anything that you'd like. You can withdraw everything, you can add to it, you can take out the interest gained. I mean, you can let it compound and roll over, which we've heard several times is one of the most powerful tools in, in the investment world and in, in the you know, financial world. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, hearing you talk about it, one of the most attractive things about it is you're liquid every 90 days. Yep. So every quarter, you're liquid. So even for real estate investors who uh, do flips or wholesaling, uh, buying holes, yep. all of those things, you liquid within 90 days so your money can work for you and you can have access to it if you need it in a short period of time right. where most investments, how long do they usually take? Say, we'll say at least say annual. Yeah. Yeah. Annual um, or three to five years. Yeah. Your money's tied up. You can't access right. it. You yeah. don't know what's going to happen in the future, so that's a strong benefit of this. Is you know, in 90 days, you're going to be able to access those funds, because yeah. life happens. You know, we we might need those funds for something, or like we said, if things are in your favor, you can compound, and let it roll over, and enjoy the power of that. Yeah. Um, you know, we have something that backs our lenders, which is collateral. 
Um, mm -hmm. Right now, currently, uh, 2023, it's August, we've got over 120 million of real estate owned outright and 24 million cash on hand as reserve. Wow. So you can believe that our lenders are backed um, and, and, you know, protected. Yeah. Well, that makes a strong statement um, because, you know, in the early days of, of any type of product or, or service in the beginning stages, typically you are, you are doing it on the strength of your word. You know, we all heard the, right. the term, my word is my bond. Yep. But if you've had longstanding clients that have been with you for decades, yeah. you don't need much collateral. But as you open up, a, say, a product like these to members that may have first been introduced on the telephone or something like yeah. that, by having a strong backbone of collateral, right, it ensures and it gives it's you diversified. the diversified. Yeah, it gives you the warm and fuzzies, like right? A nice so cozy blanket. That that collateral that you mentioned is is diversified. So everything's kind of strategically, you know, set up to where we're diversified geographically. We work with developers, and I should say proven developers, right? Yeah, Successful. they're vetted. They're Decades vetted. Decades behind their experience, generations even. Generations. And where, where are we doing most of this work? In, in the hottest area in the United States, which is the Southeast. Yeah, the Southeast. The Southeast is booming. Um, you know, there's a, like a five-year housing deficit here. Yep. Uh, and if there's a housing deficit, that means people are moving here in droves. And... They have to go somewhere to work. Yeah. They have to be parking structures built. They have to be buildings. They have. To, it all works hand in hand. So it's commercial. It's residential. It's all forms of real estate. Uh, you know that that will be profitable. Um, but not only that. Um, even though there's a collateral, a very strong portion of that is made by the the profit sharing from when the developers, when they sell mm -hmm. those deals, to an actual builder. Uh, so if you could kind of speak on that a little bit. Uh. Right, so we're contractually, you know, in these partnerships with developers where we're able to return our lenders 10% every 90 days. So if, you, if you're seeing these kind of returns, you're probably like, whoa, where's this coming from? Well, when we're doing these deals, we're not, you know, not accustomed to seeing 300 to 500% returns. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the real estate development world. That's the things that people expect to see in real estate. Um, yeah, they can and see that's those. What we're able to contractually <laughs> share with our, our lenders. Yeah. So because drive planning, you know, being a private uh, private company, uh, our participants they are lenders. You know, instead of being <laughs> lended to, they right. are the lenders, and with the profit sharing, we then basically, eh, so to speak, reward them with a 10% return 100%. every 90 days. And yeah, you're involved in the profits. You're participating in the profits. Yeah, which is, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, and your hands aren't getting dirty. So, you know, a lot of people do want to do their own investments, and we, we don't discourage that at all. That's a great way to get um, grow wealth. But this is a way to, you know, in the right now, to get, get something going and grow some of that income that you might have sitting around or... Maybe it's hard earned income that you just, you know, you, you want to see that go to work for you. Yeah, it, 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 it may have become a lazy asset. Yeah. You know, uh, you may have money that um, sometimes, and I've, I've heard uh, Todd and David speak to it, and I've seen it with my own eyes. A lot of times you have uh, uh, people that their financial structure they started maybe in their late 20s or 30s when they started their career yep. and they set it and kind of set it and forgot it. Right. And now as they mature, their financial structure didn't mature. So one of the things is, you know, um, not being in a mature stage of life yep. and still have the financial outlook and financial strategy of someone that is 20 years old. Yeah. As you grow, you have more, whether that's assets, family members depending on you, or whatever your, your specific case may right. be. Um, and, and that's where, you know, as a, as a planning group, we're able to specify that to everyone's individual needs, right? We're not, one, we're not one size fits all. We're, we, can help, we can help multiple people in their situations, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing because, you know, when people ask me, like, what are you doing now? It's like, well, we do a lot. You know, we help people, we do it in a lot of different ways. Yeah, because uh, we're, 
And I know sometimes uh, when I talk to people, it's, it's sometimes it's kind of daunting because you you hear the word financial consultant, financial advisor, fin and it sends people running for the right. hills because they're thinking this is another right. Yahoo trying to siphon, you know, off of exactly. what well, I have. I get it. It's pressure. You feel pressured, but that's not how we we're doing it, right? No, we actually we do more financial engineering right. and strategies than what you would find with, say, the traditional route that most people most people Right, it's going to benefit take. you in the now and definitely in the future. Yeah. More so than, like you said, like you mentioned with other, you know, opportunities or groups. So, yeah. I mean, we're, we're not downplaying that at all. We're just saying that that's what we have the ability to do right now and we're, we're happy to help. So, like we're you said, we're, we're in a hurry to help people. We're in a hurry to help people. Because uh, when you look at it, uh, traditionally, uh, I know I've seen it countless times with my buddies, people around me, they were taught there were three places yeah. to put your money so that you could save till you get to retirement. And that is the bank, their home, and the stock market. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's hard to... Uh, get people to be open-minded. Right. Get out of that mindset. Get out of that at mindset. At the end of the day, it is, is a mindset shift. You know, you read a lot of these books nowadays and you see a lot of these successful people, you know, especially being an athlete, you hear people's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of it starts with the mindset. So, you know, that's something that we kind of try to encourage people to have an open mindset and embrace that shift. Yeah, because sometimes... If, that's, if that aligns with your goals, then we can help you get there. Yeah, sometimes it just takes that paradigm shift to present you with things that you know you can see a uh, alternative solution yeah you know like the old saying there's more than one way to skin a cat 100%. you know and we employ several strategies and we try to find the one that is that is Since best you, fitting for you right and your plan you know that's one thing that we include in, in our planning is we're going to ask you what are your goals because we want to see the perspective or the you know the the what your outlook is in the next maybe a year, maybe five years, could be 20. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do is day one, we want to get to helping you and come up with a strategic plan that as a whole, you know, we've developed and we're extremely thankful to be a part of that. Yeah, we want, we want to be able to help engineer the goals, outlook uh, that, that, you, that you anticipate, want, desire, as well as make sure that we listen to what each individual's, right. what they think their roadblocks and or pitfalls may be, right. or challenges, we should say. Because everything is, you know, it's just a challenge. When I get on those, you know, calls with friends, family, clients, whatever it is, um, prospects, whatever you want to call it, we, we leave those calls motivated ourselves because we've left an impact on them and we see things in, in uh, their plan that might you know, bring about more ideas for future um, prospects and we can help them as well. So yeah, like I said, yeah. we're, we're motivated to help people and to um, be a part of that. Um, so it's, it's inspiring to leave those calls sometimes. You leave those calls like, hey man, they, they might have felt a little nervous when they joined the, that Zoom call or whatever yeah. phone call in person, whatever it is, and they leave that meeting feeling better than they were uh, when they started. So most, that's a goal of ours. Most definitely. It, you know, it gets you jazzed, it gets you pumped uh, because being in a hurry to help people when you leave one fired up, yeah. you may not need the double shot of espresso. There you go. <laughs> you get it from life. <laughs> you get it from life. Uh, now, to wrap things up, uh, let's talk a little bit about the wealth destroyers out there. Yeah, so there's uh, five main wealth destroyers. That's taxation, litigation, inflation, market fluctuation, and the last one is uh, devastation. Yeah, yeah. So obviously there's, there's several ways that, you know, we all want to avoid. We, we don't wish those upon anyone, but um, there are things that can happen. And we know that the hard work that you put towards uh, saving or building a portfolio can be destroyed by some of those things. So that's what we're trying to do is build a wall around your finances and protect those things first and foremost. Yeah, because uh, it all starts if you draw a simple pyramid. Yeah. The base is protection and like you said building that wall around you know your assets your family your outlook your goals your 
the things that you possess or want to possess, yep. you know, all of those things. In the olden days, they would build a wall around that city. All the things inside weren't as important if that wall was not strong right. and complete. You know, it has to be complete because if there are gaps in there, then you could have those wealth destroyers or some outside influence or something comes in and can ruin everything overnight. So you have that base and then from there we start building upon it and uh, tell us more you'd about be those fairly, You'd be fairly surprised to see that, you know, when people think about taking those steps to protect that it's going to take, you know, you're going to take five steps back. Well, if you look at it in, in reality, you're going to actually accelerate a lot faster than you would have while protecting your assets and your, your liabilities, your family, right? You're going to get several benefits from doing that. So it's not something that we feel like we have to pressure people because with our opportunities to grow wealth, you know, with, with the way of protecting them, it's all going to work out and accelerate that growth. Yeah, you know, and just to kind of summarize it, <laughs> this is the way I, I think of it is yeah. by taking action. Right. You can protect yourself from all of those other shuns that you brought up that end with T-I-O-N yep. that can put you in a bad place. 100%. Man. We try to help engineer things so you can take action and, um, you know, live well, prosper. Right. And like I more, said, at the end of the day. Make more. Live, live more. more. Right. At the end of the day, Everett and I, I can speak for him. We're, we're, we call each other, man. We're in a hurry to help. We want to help people. We've played baseball for a long time and sacrificed a lot for ourselves. We've had to be selfish in that career, right? You've got to put a lot into your body, your, your career your, to prosper. And um, like you said, it's fulfilling to help people to see that side of things and um, to have that fulfillment from seeing other people reach their goals. Yeah, yeah, because uh, being, being in a position to, to help people uh, see and realize some of the things that I didn't even know were out there 30 years ago when I came right. out of college. I'm dating myself, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but being able to talk to a young man, talk to a right. young woman, talk to someone who is in the middle, talk to someone who is in that mature stage, yep. everything in between, we can talk to them, meet them where they're at, and give them some insight as well as help them to see it's never too late. Yeah, it takes some of the weight off their shoulders. Yeah, you just gotta get started. And when you yep. speak of weight, I've been working out and <laughs> it's time <laughs> trying to get the weight off. <laughs> no, but hey, it's been a pleasure, yeah, Ryan. Man, that was great. It's been awesome. And we'll talk to everyone yep. out there soon.